Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Ryan. No. No. What? I don't understand what I've done wrong. (laughs) You are Jake. We do not sound alike. Well, we recently got a comment that we sound too similar, so we must be the same person. Which infuriates me to no end. I don't know why I'm talking to myself, but I might as well introduce what this episode's going to be about. That's right, me. This episode is the Aki Bonske review episode. This is actually Jake, by the way, in case that wasn't clear. I'm not Mac or Flarick. And I'm, or Ryan. And I'm especially not Ryan. <laughs> I'm Ryan, and if you want to check out Ryan's prediction for how the Bonske for Aki came out, you can go back about a month or so and f- listen to that episode and see how I came to the conclusions that we reached in this episode. Also, we are going to have our preview for the Aki Basho coming out sometime next week. So with that being said, let's get right into how this Bonske shook out. Hey, uh, by the way, did, uh, are, are the predictions accurate? Are, are reasonably good? Yeah. Okay, then it's then it's our prediction, I think. <laughs> I think our predictions did really well. Yeah, so last time when my prediction wasn't so good, it, it was Ryan's prediction. It was prediction. Ryan's prediction that, that crapped the bed. But now, since it's a good prediction, it's it's Grand Sumo Breakdown's Bonds K prediction. Or we could just cut Flarick and Matt completely out of it since they put no effort into these episodes and just say Ryan and Jake's. There you go. Uh, this is Ryan's prediction, so on the... Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get over, get it over with. Yokozuna, no surprises and no changes, I believe. We have Kakuryu as your East Yokozuna and Hakuho as your West Yokozuna. I'm pretty sure that's how they came into Nagoya. Uh, nailed both of those predictions. Wow, good job. Yeah, thank you. And that's just, I mean, obviously when you're a Yokozuna, there's nowhere up to go. You just get positioned based on, you know, whoever did best last time is the best or the highest ranked Yokozuna. That's right, with the east side being slightly more prestigious and higher ranked than the west side. Uh, Same with Ozeki. I mean, there is up to go and there is down to go, but it's a lot more rare than with other positions. So it's just rearranging the order of the Ozeki based on how well they did in the previous Basho. And I don't really think you could say the Ozeki did well at all in the previous Basho, so it's who did the least bad. Hey, 11 wins isn't so bad. Overall, for one guy, correct. Yeah, for exactly. Four guys combined, incorrect. Oh, so okay, eight, that's a fair point. Eight of those wins go to your top ranked Ozeki Takayasu, and then the remaining three of those wins go to your West Ozeki Goedo. So East one Takayasu, West one Goedo. Because at East two we have Tochi Noshin, who was zero and fifteen, and it wasn't because he missed the entire tournament; he only missed ten days, so he started off zero and five. Wow! So Tochi Noshin, not the worst Ozeki in last tournament, you mean? <laughs> Well, I, he tied for the worst Ozeki in the last tournament. He's, he's Ozeki 2 East, so I think that means that he was not the worst Ozeki in the previous tournament. Once again, he tied as the worst <laughs> Ozeki because Takakesho was also 0-15, but unfortunately for him, that was his second straight losing record as an Ozeki. So Takakesho will be going down to the Sekiwake rank, meaning we will only have three Ozeki for this tournament. I believe we only had one Basho with four Ozeki because when Takakesho was promoted, Tochi Noshin was Sekiwake, and now then we had that one with all four of them, and now it's going back down to three because Takakesho is getting demoted down to Sekiwake. Yes, the the cursed number. You cannot have four. Yeah, uh, yep, there we go. So I loaded the Bonske for May, and yeah, it was only... Uh, Wow, yeah, it was only July that we had four Ozeki. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because, uh, just personal tangent here, when I first started watching Sumo, there were four Ozeki. Kisei, so that, Goedo, uh, Teru no Fuji, and Kodo Shogiku. There you go. So it, that feels like the, the right number. Yeah. But we only had one, and now we're back down to th- back down to uh, three Ozeki, and it, and it feels kind of strange again. Yeah, we had ta- only Takayasu and Goedo for a little bit, so. Yeah. Kind of bolstering their ranks, but we'll move on to the rest of Sekiwake. Uh, no, I, I want some more personal anecdotes in here real quick. Uh, all right, fine, I'm done. 
On the east side, we're going to have Mitake Yumi holding strong there as he had a winning record as Sekiwake East in the previous Basho. And on the west side, we are going to have Takakesho dropping from Ozeki rank to the lowest uh, Sekiwake rank. I'm kind of curious here. Did you do some research to see whether Takakesho would be east or west? Um, he, they are always the lowest ranked Sekiwake. Okay, so if you come down, if past, you come yeah. down from Ozeki, you're what, however many Sekiwake there there are. If you're coming down from Ozeki, you're the bottom one. Correct. When Terano Fuji and Koto Shogiku both came down, they created a third Sekiwake slot, and they were the third Sekiwake. Interesting. Okay, so there was some possibility of there being a third Sekiwake slot opened up for Aki because we did have Abi, who was the top-ranked Komosubi, that did have a winning record. So with a winning record, you'd expect a promotion, and next step up would be Sekiwake. But Abi did not do enough in the eyes of the Bonske committee to warrant opening up a third Sekiwake slot. So Abi is going to remain your East Komosubi, and because of that, we're going to give him the... One of the snub of the Bonds K candidates. We're going to be tracking that throughout the Bonds K. See who we think might have been snubbed a little bit by the Bonds K committee on this Bonds K. So he ended up where you expected him to end up. He, he did just... end up where I thought he would end up, but given some circumstances, he could have been higher. Gotcha. I was just smart enough to know it wouldn't happen. Uh, real quick bonus fun fact. Ooh. Um, I've been doing some research, uh, sneak peek, I guess, exclusive access GSB preview here. Uh, Kisuno Sato is having his, friend of the show, Kisuno Sato yes. is having his uh, retirement ceremony next month. So we've been doing a little bit of research. We're looking to do a, uh, a bonus episode about his career. And uh, he has uh, a very strange record. Um, he was Komasubi for like, like a year in a row, um, and including a 10 and five record with a special prize at East Komosubi. And he did not get promoted to Sekiwaki. You would think that that would warn enough to open up a third Sekiwaki slot. That is a, a huge snub of the bonds K, especially compared to like Abi here, who, uh, in this particular tournament ended up, he, he only finished with an eight and five, eight, eight and seven. I can do math, right? <laughs> 15 eight minus seven, 8 is clearly 5. But one of those wins was a Fusen win, so technically only 7 wins. 7 wins in the ring, yeah. yeah. So I, I agree it's a snub, but just because, purely by coincidence, because of the research I've been doing, not the biggest snub that's ever happened. And he's just a candidate? Who knows? He might not win. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll have to wait for the award ceremony yes. to find out. And we move on to the west side of the Komosubi rank. We have Endo there, uh, jop- jumping over Hokuto Fuji who was looking like he could take that Komosubi slot, but they faced off on day 15, both with identical 9-5 and five records. And Endo ended up beating Hokuto Fuji, and they were close enough in the rankings where Endo was able to jump over Hokuto Fuji and take that last Komosubi slot, as I predicted. <laughs> so, well, well done, GSB team. The- <laughs> I will not let you take credit for this. <laughs> hey, hey, this is the GSB Bonds K review episode. So I will allow the GSB name and brand taking title taking credit for it, but not Ryan and Jake. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I think we should rewind the tape and see what you said a few minutes ago. Damn it! I did say we we need almost, to kick out Mac almost and word for word. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next. All right, we're going to move on to the Zone of Death, where, once again, we got a logjam of people who deserve to be up here. Uh, Zone of Death? Zone of Death is the top three or four Magashira ranks, the guys who you expect to face all of the Sekiwake, Ozeki, Yokozuna. They're going to be guys that have a very tough schedule in front of them. The cannon fodder. Exactly. So, at Magashira 1 East, we have the aforementioned Hokuto Fuji, moving over only a half rank from the previous Basho, where he was 9-6 and six at Magashira 1 West. And on the west side now, we have Aoyama, who was 8-7 and seven from Magashira 2, so he's also moving up a half rank. And just because Hokuto Fuji was Magashira 1, had a 9-6 and six record, 
and didn't make it into the Sanyaku ranks, only got to move up a half rank, he's going to be another one of our snub of the Bonske candidates. I feel like that one is a little bit biased, but you know, whatever. I mean, just because Hokuto Fuji is my favorite and the best Rikishi in the whole world, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Moving on to Magashira 2. By the way, got both of those predictions correct. Magashira oh, man, 2. we nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> on the east side, we have Ichinojo, who had himself a 9-6 and six record and got a keen boshi over Hakuho in the previous Basho, so he gets bumped up from Maegashira 4 in the previous Basho, and Asanoyama struggled a little bit with his first tournament in the Zone of Death. He is at Maegashira 2 West, dropping from Maegashira 1 East after a 7-8 and eight performance. Yeah, and he got that huge promotion all the way up to Megashira 1 East because of that Yusho win that he had two tournaments ago. And this is something we've covered quite a bit, and I'm sure we'll cover it again. But Asnoyama, pretty young, pretty promising, but he got that huge promotion, and it he, he did fairly well. Followed the overall trend, though, of Yusho winners from the Megashira ranks getting to the upper Maegashira slash Komosubi ranks, mm -hmm. not doing well in the next tournament. Yeah, exactly. When when you get a huge promotion, you get a huge step up in in, uh, in competition. And yeah. Asnoyama, I do think that he did well enough to be promising for his future, but yeah, yeah not not a huge shock that he has a, a, at least some demotion in the next tournament here. Yeah. Moving on to Maegashira 3 East. Got both of the Maegashira 2s correct, by the way. On the east side, we've got Diet. Haven't missed one yet, Jake. That's Have you noticed? Uh, yeah, no, we're doing great. All right, Maegashira 3 East. We have Daisho, who's just moving up a half rank with an 8-7 and seven record from Nagoya. And on the west side, we have Tomokaze, who is going to be at his career-high rank in, I believe, just his fourth Basho in the Makuuchi division. He was another guy that was kind of unlucky here. He had an 11 and 4 record from Magashira 7. He had uh Kinboshi win over Kakuryu, a special prize, and he only moved up four ranks for an 11 and 4 record and we've mentioned it in the past but my kind of rule of thumb for when I'm initially placing the Bonske is a guy with 11 4 record, he had seven more wins than he did losses, so I expect about a seven rank jump here. And he's only going up four based on that. So you, you would expect him to be around Megashira 1, give or take, or Komosubi? Even? On a lot of other Bonds case, he could have easily ended up Megashira 1 or Komosubi, but it's just sure. there was such a log jam. Pretty much because the Zone of Death had a pretty good record overall, so the guys that were there stayed there instead of kind of what you see a lot of times where a lot of the guys. Magashira one, two, three, drop down the rankings. Yeah, and I think this is in uh, a, a, a tremendously important factor here is all those losses that the Ozeki gave up, and including a guy that we're going to get to here, Tamawashi. One of the Sekiwake gave up ten losses. Yeah. So normally, we and Komosubi Uduyuden gave up eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I missed him too, but that's a that's a huge factor here too. Normally, we see. The Yokozuna, the Ozeki, and usually at least one or two of the Sekiwake Komasubi guys do really well and, you know, just devastate that Megashira 1, 2, 3 range. Yep. But, but this time we uh, kind of had the opposite going on. Pretty piss poor showing by the Sanyaki ranks. You could say that, Not yes. named Yokozuna. <laughs> yes, the, the, you know, the first and second place guys did their thing, but, you know, yeah. other than that, no. So yeah, Tomokaze is going to be our third snub of the Bonske candidate. Uh, we also have a luck of the Bonske award. You notice we haven't had any candidates for that, but we'll we'll see more of those as we move along the Bonske. And so from Yokozuna all the way to Maegashira 3 West, perfect prediction from me so far. And so close to nailing Maegashira 4 East and West. If you remember back into our prediction episode for how this Bonske was going to turn out, I almost convinced myself and pretty much did convince myself that Tamawashi was going to be your Magashir 4 East and Shodai was going to be the Magashir 4 West, even though in my initial draft I had those two switched around with Shodai on the East side of Magashir 4 and Tamawashi on the West side. I left it like that, but I should have just gone ahead and changed it like I wanted to in that episode because that's how it ended up. Tamawashi on the east side of the Magashira 4 rank and Shodai on the west side. That sounds like the kind of thing that I would have mocked you into sticking to your guns. Yeah, probably. So I'm going to take credit for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the, these two misses are on you, Jake. Uh, real quick, my uh, one final comment on the guys in the joy here uh, from me, Tomokaze. I think he's going to be in the same situation Asanoyama was in July. I think that that 
Uh, he is getting a big promotion. He did a little bit better than maybe he should have done if he wanted to keep getting winning records, keep developing, keep uh, keep growing as a fighter. But I think uh, moving up into the joy so quickly. You you were correct, by the way. This is his fourth Basho yep. in the Makuchi division. Uh, he's already going to be facing Yokozuna, and he could be in big trouble, get a big losing record and a demotion. I have... A lot of opinions on that and Tomokaze in general, but I'm going to save them for our preview edition. So if you want to hear my retort to that, make sure you tune into our Aki preview episode. Got it. You got no comebacks. Good. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so Tamawashi on the east side of Magashir 4 rank actually wraps up the zone of death because that he's going to be the 16th ranked wrestler. And so the top 16 are the joy and he wraps that up as those are all the people you expect to face Yokozuna and a full Sanyaku slate. However, we do have Shodai, who is Joy adjacent, and he's probably going to be going up against a full slate of Sanyaku Rikshi, because I can pretty much guarantee you Takayasu is not showing up to Aki. Yeah, so we got Takayasu, Goedo, Tochinoshin, and Takakesho up above these guys who all pulled out with injury. So if even a single one of them is not participating in the full Basho, that means Shodai is getting tossed in there with the big boys. Yep. And with Hakuho's torn bicep, we don't know. He might be a surprise pullout. As far as I know, he's been participating in all the Jingyo, but that's Aki preview episode stuff. Right, right. Shodai and maybe a couple of these guys below are, are in danger of a tough schedule, depending yep. on injuries. So let's move on to those guys below Shodai. And at Magashir 5 East, we have Chiyo Taidu. Back to my winning ways of correctly predicting that. But on the west side, we have Duyuden, who is only dropping down to Magashir 5 after a 4 and 11 record from Komosubi. I had him dropping down to Magashir 7 East. I'm guessing they're giving him the benefit of the doubt, as they seem to, that. If you're in the Sanyaku ranks, you just don't seem to fall as far. I was having trouble placing Ryuden uh, without punishing somebody else uh, that did better than him. Uh, but it turns out they're kind of taking all their hate out on uh, maybe like Shimano Umi, who, well, Shimano Umi's only a half rank lower than what I thought he should have been, but mostly Kodo Shogiku, but we'll get to those guys. But yeah, Ryuden, because of that, is going to be our first luck of the Bonske candidate because I think he should have gone down a little bit further. But this is also something special to track, because this is who Jake had as his pick to earn a super special high five from me by picking who my worst pick would be. So we're going to follow that as we go through the Bonds K and see if there's anybody that I bit missed by more than three half ranks, which is how much I missed you Den by. I'm really upset because I am left hanging by the second half of that paragraph that you read, <laughs> but I will endure. Yeah, and we still brainstorming, workshopping new names for the super special high five thing. Uh, it hasn't come around yet, but I swear that cannot be the per permanent name for <laughs> that. Because everything else we've done has so much better of names. I, I kind of like Snub of the Bonske and Luck of the Bonske. I was more talking about our podcast quality in general. I mean, that's fair. It's That's just <laughs> burning pile of garbage. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Moving on, Magashira 6 East. We do have Shimano Umi, who is at a career high for himself. He had an 8-7 and seven record. Uh, we did also find another point against my whole, if they have the identical record and rank, that they'll move up the same exact amount as Chiyo Taidu and Shimano Umi. Both had eight and seven records at the Magashira six ranking in the previous Basho, but Chiyo Taidu moved up to Magashira five east, whereas Shimano Umi only moved up a half rank to Magashira six east. So breaking up that pair, once again, just showing that that isn't 100% correct that that's just a rule of thumb you've kind of noticed yeah. and used when you can but yeah it's it's clearly not a, a hard fast rule yeah and finish out the Magashira six rank on the west side we have miyogiryu jumping up a was it just a half rank or a full rank half rank half rank after an eight and seven record from Magashira seven at Magashira seven i have already forgotten what we said about miyogiryu yeah I, yeah, <laughs> I, I I struggle. Uh, Shimano Umi is another one. Uh, he's he's new, so maybe maybe this will change. But like, 
I, I do a better job of tracking the new guys, especially new guys that are doing really well. So yeah. Shima Numi hasn't had a losing record in Makauchi yet. Tomokaze, I think, has a super bright future mm-hmm. ahead of him, For so sure. I've been tracking him. Uh, we'll get to another kind of newbie at Maegashira 7, but we're going to start with a very much not newbie, Koto Shogiku. <laughs> Uh, dropping down two full ranks after just a seven and eight record and a Kinboshi over Hakuho. Ouch. Yeah. So I don't understand why they're dropping Koto Shogiku so far with a seven and eight record, especially when they could have just dropped Ryuden at this point, because let's be honest, Ryuden sucked in the last box show. <laughs> Koto Shogiku wasn't great. He was better than Ryuden. He's not worthy of analogies such as uh, bed crapping and so on. Yeah. He, I mean, it was just, eh. Yeah. So, Koto Shogiku is our fourth snub of the Bonske candidate that we have. And on the west side of the Maegashira 7 rank, we have Koto Eiko, who is at his career high. And he is moving up, I believe, two ranks from, no, three ranks from Maegashira 10 in the previous Basho. Both of these guys I did have off by a full rank. Uh, whereas, like, Miyu Giryu, I had exact correct prediction. Uh, we'll move on to Maegashira 8. On the east side, Okinoumi, I head off by a half a rank. I'm pretty sure I had him Maegashira 7 west. And on the west side, we have Takara Fuji, who I also had off by one half of a rank. And at Maegashira 9, on the east side, we have Terutsu Yoshi. I cre- correctly predicted this large jump for him. This is his career-high rank, and he's coming off that 12-3 and record in June Yusho and special prize that he had at Nagoya. Very impressive performance for Terutsu Yoshi, giving him a 7-rank jump from Maegashira 16, the very last guy in the Makuchi division last time, all the way up to Maegashira 9. Yeah, I think... Um This one is one that I feel is a little bit of a snub. Um, Yeah, he was in the very, very bottom slot, but I feel like he could have gone a little bit higher here. I I wouldn't have argued with a little bit higher of a ranking for him. I do feel like the Bonske committee really values the strength of the schedule that you go up against, and they really take that into consideration. So a 12-3, and he did end up facing some higher-ranked guys towards the end. He did take on Maegashira 1, Hokuto Fuji. He did take on, well, Tomokaze was Maegashira 7, but he was having a really good performance. So I guess the highest-ranked guy he did face was Hokuto Fuji. Everybody else was either like 7, 8, or... in double digits. So. Yeah, and one of them, one of his wins was a Jurio win. Yeah. So I don't know. I uh, this is this is one that I clearly and openly admit is definitely bias because <laughs> I feel like the higher you throw your salt, the the more of a promotion you should get. That's fair. But that may be just a, a personal rule of thumb. That may not be something the Bonske committee can uh, you know really consider. All right, and then on the west side of the Maegashira Nine, we have Koto Yuki, uh, Jake. What are your feelings on Koto Yuki also getting a seven rank jump? Um, I would like to take a full minute of silence uh, in in respect for everyone who got totally snubbed because Koto Yuki exists and makes this world a worse place. Ready, go. Uh, no, we're not going to do that. That's terrible podcasting etiquette for our fans. We'll see how I process this one in editing. <laughs> uh, Koto Yuki. He had an 11-4 record from the Maegashira 16 rank, and he's also jumping up seven ranks to Maegashira 9. Uh, I do feel like since Teretsuyoshi had a better record, the Jun Yusho and a special prize, there should have been more of a distance between these two guys. Kind of nitpicking, but I'm gonna That's give, not nitpicking. I'm going to give Koto Yuki <laughs> uh, luck of the Bonske candidate thing here. There's, not, there's no real glaringly, like, obvious lucky breaks that somebody got on this bonds K. Like I said, in the bonds K prediction episode, there was one or two people for every rank. It wasn't something where you had to pull somebody from way down below to fill this rank because there was nobody else deserving of it. So there's no real lucky breaks into that. So it's little things that's going to earn people the luck of the bonds K candidacy on this one. So Cody Yuki, Cody Yuki is going to be one of those guys. I will say to Koto Yuki's tremendous detriment um, <laughs> that the the highest ranked opponent that he had was Megashira Four Meisei, who ended up four and eleven, whereas uh, Teritsuyoshi faced Hokuto Fuji, who ended with a nine and six from Megashira One. Yep. So just you know, based on strength of schedule, I think that my biases are confirmed and correct. <laughs> 
Uh, Kota Yuki, I had off by a full rank. I'm pretty sure I mentioned in the prediction episode I ranked him a little lower just for the benefit of Jake. So maybe I could have done a little bit better if I wasn't so nice to Jake. Don't do that. Just Certainly continue, will not continue happen doing how in the you future. It. Yeah, that it better not. <laughs> well, I meant being nice to you. Oh, eh, you could be mean to me and Kota Yuki. <laughs> I feel like that's perfectly appropriate. Moving on to Maegashir at 10. On the east side, we have Sada no Umi, And on the west side, we have Meisei. Uh, he got quite a large drop from, as Jake just mentioned, he had a 4-11 and record from Maegashir at 4. Moving down 6 ranks to Maegashir at 10. I had him off by a full rank because I had him taking Kota Yuki's spot. I pretty much s- switched those two guys in my final Bonsuke prediction just to make Jake feel a little bit better. I'm going to switch them in my mental Bonsuke right now. That'll work. Uh, Maegashira 11 on the east side we have Onosho and on the west side we have our little baby boy Enho who had a 9-6 and six record from Maegashira 14 last time and we're going to get into a nice little small uh, perfect streak for me as I got both of those guys absolutely correct. Real quick I think Enho deserves a snub of the Bonske award for not being moved up to Sekiwake uh, because he did such a good job and he's such a good big boy. For somebody of his age and stature, I'm assuming he's, what, three, four years old? Give or take. Yeah. At least compared to the rest of the guys, that's how old he looks. For So for somebody like that to do as well as he did, to get one win really should move him up. His win should count like double, right? Yeah. So and if you get 18 wins like Enho did in this last tournament... That's at least a double U show. Easily. Yeah. And... Double U shows get you Yokozuna status, so I don't know why we're not talking about Yokozuna and Ho right now. Let's just move on. This is making me angry. Yeah. Magashira 12. On the east side, we have Shohozan, and on the west side, Dai Shoho. Both of those correct, but it also still shows that the identical rank and record pairing still works sometimes, as both of these guys were demoted from Magashira 9 in the previous Basho with 6 and 9 records. On Maegashira 13, on the east side we have Kageyaki, and on the west side we have Nishkigi. Another couple of pair of perfect predictions on my part. At Maegashira 14, on the w- east side we have Tsurugisho, who was our Juryo Yusho winner in Nagoya. He is making his Makuuchi debut, and so obviously this will be his career high. And on the west side we have Toyonoshima. That's a pretty gigantic jump for Tsurugisho. Yeah, because he was Juryo 6 in the previous Basho, I believe. Yeah, 6 East, and he won the Yusho with a 13-2. and two. I mean, yeah, 13-2 and two is impressive, but getting jumped up, not just 6 ranks into the top division, but, like, he jumped over 6 other guys. Oh, yeah, it's a 8-rank jump, really. I don't know how to treat that Maegashira is 17, because it didn't exist in the previous Bonske, so yeah, I don't know true. how to count that as another numbered rank jump. So it's an 8 or 9 numbered rank jump for him after a 13-2 and two record, which is 11 more wins than losses. So I think that's pretty in line with what we'd expect for something there. One thing that I think would be fun to, to, to research, and by this I mean I'm curious and you do the work, um, would be how big a deal is it to go from Jurio to Makuchi? If, you know, is getting a three rank jump from Jurio one into two ranks deep in Makuchi, is that the same, you know, level of prestige? Or is there like some, some amount of, uh, uh, you know, getting held back that you get if you're, if you're making the jump between divisions. Have you noticed any patterns there, or does it seem to be treated as one division for the purpose of rankings? No, I, I do think they will value the Makuuchi guys a little bit more and give them the benefit of the doubt in the rankings. Like this one, I almost had Nishkigi dropping down to Magashira 14 East and Sudugisho. Sudugisho taking that Magashira 13 West spot from him. Uh, Nishkigi was 6-9 and nine for Magashira 11. Uh, but in the end, if I'm having a battle in my mind about who should be ranked where, I typically go with the higher ranked guy if they're in like very different places. So obviously Makuuchi and Jurio, very different places. Uh, like somebody in the zone of death versus somebody who's Magashira 7, very different places okay. based on your competition. So I give the benefit of the doubt, or at least for this Basho, I gave the benefit of the doubt to those higher ranked guys who face the better competition, and it seems to have worked in my favor pretty well for this one. So you're if, if you're 50-50 on punishing a Megashira versus rewarding a Jurio, I'll... You'll you'll go you'll go in favor of the the Megashira guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, that that makes sense. And so, 
I think this is important to note that I finally nailed the Jiryo Yusho winner jump into Makuuchi after kind of struggling with that pretty hard with Takagenji and especially Shimanoumi in my past couple of predictions. So a nice little uh, pat on the back for myself there for finally getting that correct. Yeah, good job, team. Yeah. <laughs> that will end our nice little eight person perfect streak that we had on the bottom side of the Bonske as we move into Magashira 15 East. I have Ishiura. I had him coming in at the west side, so a half rank difference there. And on the west side, we have Azumaru, who was only eight and seven in the previous Basho. He was Jiryo one. Uh, I had him off by a full rank, and because, like I mentioned before, we're kind of thin on people that had fortunate breaks go in their direction. I'm going to throw a luck of the Bonsuke candidate at Azumaru, uh, just because. He was only 8-7, and seven, and I feel like maybe Yutakayama could have been ranked ahead of him, or, well, yeah, no, he, that's about it. Tochi Ozan and Takagenji deserve what they got. It, he still jumped up five half ranks. Um, yeah. You know, with for barely, an 8-7 record. For an 8-7 and, and switching into the top division. Yeah. So, yeah, that that is, uh, that, I would agree that's very lucky. Yeah. Moving on to Magashira 16, on the east side we have Yutakayama, who I had as Magashira 17 east as the bottom guy, so I missed him by a full rank. And we also have Tochi Ozan on Magashira 16 west. At Magashira 17, we have Takagenji. And so, Jake, we have gone through the full bonds K. Uh, your guy, Ryuden, was looking pretty good for a while with being off by three ranks. You mean for my special high five award? For your special high five award. And three ranks was the largest we had until we get to the very last guy in the division. I almost had that which I desire most. A high five from Ryan, yes. The Takagenji... Yeah, when you say it, it doesn't sound so great, though. A Whatever. high five from Ryan. No. Wow. That's making it worse. Ryan. Get on with our predictions yeah. that we did so good on together uh, as a team. <laughs> Takagenji is the guy that I missed by the most on in this Basho. I missed him by two full numbered ranks or four half ranks. I had him falling at Magashira 15 because I didn't want to promote guys like Azumaru and Yutakayama as far as they did get promoted. Once again, it was kind of that give him the benefit of the doubt since he faced the tougher competition. In that case, it kind of worked against me. Uh, but I am going to throw a luck of the Bonske candidacy at Takagenji uh, just because it was pretty close for him falling into Jurio there. Uh, but that will wrap up our Bonske for Aki uh, because we have four new guys by my count up into Makauchi, uh, Tsurugisho, Ishiura, Azumaru, and Yutakiyama all making the jump from Jurio. Of course, that means we got guys dropping from Makauchi into Jurio, those being Yoshikaze for the first time in probably a very long time. I'll take a look while you continue. Yago dropping down to Jurio for the first time since he hit the Makuuchi ranks at the beginning of this year. Chiyomaru dropping back into Jurio. He's been yo-yoing between Jurio and Makuuchi the past couple of Basho. And Kaisei is actually making a return trip to Jurio. He was there about a year or so ago when he suffered uh, injury then. And I'm pretty sure he won a Jurio Yusho on his way back to Makuuchi. So he'll have the chance to do that again. We'll see how his arm is looking. Hopefully he'll be able to compete and come back to Makuuchi fairly soon because he's definitely a lot better than a typical Jurio Dixie. Right. For Yoshikaze, uh, one of the longest, uh, longest careers, one of the, one of the most consistent top guys. The last time he was in Jurio, I was a junior in high school. Oh, wow. It yeah. It's like 2000. And I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost 30 and that's ancient. I'm about to have to get, uh, you know, put down and sent to the glue factory. You know, Flair Trent's 31 this year. Oh, yeah. He should already be on his way to the glue factory. <laughs> uh, May of 2005 was the last time that Yoshikaze was not in the top division. How about, go back up, scroll back up on that, Jake. How about that uh, May of 2007? May of 2007. Yeah. You yeah, said May of 2005 was the last time he was Yes, in. 5 of 2007, which is the month of May. Yes. 
That was the last time. That was the last time that he was in Jurio. Yeah. Either way, a very long time. It's been 12 years since Yoshikaze has been down to Jurio, so hopefully he gets over whatever has been ailing him, and he doesn't also make the drop down to Makushta, because I don't. He might be a guy like Amanishki where it's like, ah, I'm just done. I don't. Yeah. I don't need to live that life anymore. So let's look at the stats of this Basho and how I did compared to my prediction. <laughs> so I got 26 exact correct predictions out of a possible 42. So that's a 62% for uh, exact predictions, which is my new best for correct predictions. In the last, how long have we been doing this? Uh, we've been doing this for about a year now. I think our my first one was Kyushu. Of, it looks like Aki will be our sixth. Yeah. And only our third one that we've recorded, I kept track of the other three kind of behind the scenes. And so I had six Rikshi that were at the correct rank, but were on the wrong side. So somebody like Takara Fuji, who I had at Maegashira 8 East, actually ended up being Maegashira 8 West. Uh, so pretty close with six additional guys, so that gets me to 32 hits. And this is kind of how the Guess the Bonsuke contest that Kitama Yama hosts, that's how they do their scoring. So if you get it exactly right or you have them at the correct rank but the wrong side, that's considered a hit. And so I got 32 hits, which is 76%. My previous best was the, I believe it was the Natsu Bonsuke prediction, where I had 81% hit rate. Uh, I had three more that were at the wrong rank, but only a half step off. So if it was like Okinoumi, who I had at, I believe, Maegashira 7 West, but he ended up Maegashira 8 East, then that's still just a half step off. It's really no different from the guys that I got at the right rank, but the wrong side. So I also add those into my record. Uh, so that's 35 that I was off by only one half rank for an 83 percentage hit of being exactly correct or only off by half rank which is not my best my previous best was 91 percent but my total misses on this one was only 26 which beats my previous best which was 32 for the natsu bonsuke prediction so i had an average error of 0.62 for how far off i was per rikshi right so you're that means that you're looking at less than less than one rank average miss you got, um, yeah, I, I've, I've, I'm pulling up the stats here. This was, uh, this was definitely your best one if you're looking at it overall, mm -hmm. regardless of those hit rank or those, those hit uh, rates that you listed off. This one was definitely your best overall if we're looking at, you know, how how close you got on average to each of them. Yeah. And my worst guess, which I like to track just to make sure I don't. I'm getting better with not having somebody egregiously off. My worst guess on this one was, like we said, Takagenji was off by four half ranks, and my previous worst was eight. So getting better at that. Uh, but this is my new best worst. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, some just stats about the Bonsuke as a whole. Our biggest jump were Teretsuyoshi and Kotoyuki, both getting those seven rank jumps from the Magashira 16 rank. Our biggest drops were Meisei and Takagenji, both dropping six ranks, respectively, after 4-11 and 11 records. But that's not including the guys who dropped from Makuuchi down to Jurio. If you count them, then you also have Kaisei, who dropped down nine ranks from Magashir 15 to like Jurio 7 or 8. And you also had Yoshikaze, who dropped down 12 ranks from Makuuchi 11, Magashira 11, and he's down to Jurio 7 now. Ouch. So yeah, pretty big drops for both of those guys. We have five guys that are at their career high. So we have, oh, uh, we got Tsurugisho, we have Enho, Tedesuyoshi, Kotoeko, and Tomokaze. Uh, no guys are making their Sanyaku debut in this Basho. We do have one guy, Tsurugisho, that is making his Makuuchi debut. And so now let's get to those awards that we were teasing before. We had the snub of the Bonsuke candidates, Abi not making it to Sekiwake, Hokuto Fuji only getting a half rank jump for a 9 and 6 record, Tomokaze only jumping up four ranks for an 11 and 4 record, a Kimboshi and a special prize. And we have Koto Shogiku that was dropped two ranks after a 7 and 8 record 
and a Kinboshi win over Hakuho. But the winner after all of that is I'm going to give it to Tomokaze on here because I really feel like he's the guy that on a any other Bonske was kind of off by the most of what you would expect because he could have easily been in the Sanyaku ranks and it'll only be Magashira 3 there. Yeah, and o- just, instead only getting four ranks up. Yeah, 4 and 11 and 4 records. That's so. silly. So Tomokaze is our official snub of the Bonske. We're going to move on to the luck of the Bonske. Kind of had to pick some nits for this one. Uh, first candidate was Ryuden, only dropping to Magashira 5 after 4-11 and 11 record from Komosubi. Koto Yuki, who got pretty much the same amount of jump that Terutsuyoshi did, despite Terutsuyoshi's better performance. Azumaru, who's jumping up like five half ranks or two and a half ranks after... Uh, 8-7 and seven record in Jurio. And we also have Takagenji, who did dr- drop down uh, 6 or 7 numbered ranks. I still don't know how to deal with that Magashira 17 being in there for a 4-11 and 11 record. But I am giving it to Takagenji just because... This is a robbery. Four of the last five Rikshi that had a 4-11 and 11 record at the Magashira 10 rank have gone to Jurio. And so he's getting the luck of the Bonske record because he stayed in Makauchi this Basho. Absolute robbery. Koto Yuki is the luckiest turd out there. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I feel like it, the fact that he wasn't demoted to Jurio, despite his record, is uh, just insulting to me. And Jake might be a little salty because he did not get to receive a super special high five on this episode of the podcast. Somehow I'm going to get over it. But that is going to wrap up our Aki Bonske review. If you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all the good junk. And our blog is grandsumobreakdown. Uh, something? Yeah, it's just type in blah, 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 and you'll find GrandSumoBreakdown.com. GrandSumoBreakdown.com is exactly what I was going to say. Uh, please don't step on my lines, Ryan. Right, yeah, because you were totally nailing that. If you have any comments, questions, or there's a third thing Mac usually says, but I'm going to go... Corrections. With- Corrections. I was going to say concerns. <laughs> if you're concerned about the GSB crew, <laughs> send us an email at GrandSumoBreakdown at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. And if you don't have concerns, you are clearly not listening to the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Uh, we will have our Aki preview episode out in about a week's time, and that Bosch show is going to be starting september 8th so it's time to get hype for that hype pew, 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 pew. bye thank you for listening to grand sumo breakdown until next time throw your salt high and keep moving forward